In a previous video, we've already made some natural dye using things from our kitchen and our garden. And now we're gonna press some flowers and use our dye to make some beautiful artwork. Why are we doing this? We are trying to experiment with transferring color or pigment from natural materials, which is a science goal. And we're also trying to experiment with new materials and techniques in art. You will need some paper. Uh, it works best if you have watercolor paper because it's really absorbent and it can absorb all of that water that you're going to put on it. Um, if you don't have watercolor paper, you can try it out and see. Just be mindful of how much water you're adding onto your paper. Uh, you'll, you can use a paintbrush if you like. We're going to mainly use a spray bottle and an eyedropper in this video. You're going to need to collect some plants and natural materials to press. So we're just using some leaves and um, a couple flowers that we found in our garden. Uh, we need wax paper or parchment paper and something heavy. So we're going to be pressing these flowers. Uh, we used a stack of books for our something heavy, but you can choose whatever you kind of have available at home. So Olivia has gathered some leaves from the garden and this video has been sped up a little bit and she's arranging them in a way that she likes on her page. And at this point, they haven't been pressed down or anything, so she can move them around. Well, we're gonna try to avoid overlapping the plants. We want them to not overlap, but just be arranged beside each other. All right. So now that she's pretty happy with it and we've checked to make sure they aren't overlapping, we're placing a parchment paper and some heavy books on top and we're going to leave it for about 24 hours. Uh, it's just to make sure that the flowers get pressed down nicely. All right, we've let it sit. And now we're sprinkling and spraying some dye on top of our pressed flowers. So some techniques that you can do on top of your pressed flowers are doing a wash with a brush. If you do choose to do this, you're going to have to make sure you hold your pressed flowers in place because they may move around. Another option is a spray bottle. So you're going to use your index finger on the top and press it down. Or if you have one of those kind with the trigger, that works as well, which might even be better for uh, smaller hands. So spraying on top of the spray bottle is great. And an eyedropper works well as well. And if you do not have an eyedropper, you can do the same kind of effect using a paintbrush. So you're just going to get your brush really wet and then you're going to tap it with your finger in a downwards motion and it will create a splatter. You can also just get your brush super wet and it can just drip the paint off without even having to tap. So there's that. Another cool thing uh, that you can do with these dyes is you can lift them off your paper with paper towel. So if you spray too much or you add too much and, and your paper is getting really wet, you can use a paper towel to just lift some off. And you can combine all of these techniques or you can make your own technique. So if you let, if you paint wet dye on top of another color of wet dye, it's gonna mix together. So it can be really fun. 
If you're noticing that you have too much water on your paper, your paper is starting to look like this, you can just stop working for a second and let it dry. And once it's dried, you can go in for round two and you can add some more dye, but allowing it to dry um, stops everything from blending together. So here is Olivia's pressed flower art with the dye on top. And we had let it dry and use some paper towel a couple times. And now we wait for it to dry and then we can remove the flowers, which is the fun part. Okay, we let it dry overnight and now the fun part is you get to remove the flowers and it leaves an imprint and some of them it's really easy to tell what they are and some of them they're just a really cool interesting shape so me and olivia are going to work on our art together so we are removing our flowers and we're just keeping them over to the side so that we can continue to look at them we're going to be doing a contour drawing to kind of fill in those white spaces so here's Olivia, she's looking really carefully at the leaf that she just pulled off of her piece. And in contour drawing, we're only using lines. And she's just drawing as much detail as she can possibly see. So she's grabbed the leaf over so she can look at it more carefully. So I'm also going to begin my contour drawings and I'm going to just go and outline around the edge of the leaf. And it's easy to tell most of the time because the paint didn't go under the leaf, but sometimes it may have. So here's Olivia in fast motion. She's not actually drawing this fast. In contour drawings we want to stay nice and slow and really observe so Olivia found it helpful to pull off a leaf and then look carefully at it and then draw it it helped her to have that leaf right there to be able to look at it And these are our finished art pieces and they look so cool, so different, and I just love them. I cannot wait to see what you create. <laughs>